Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Psych. Just kidding, guys. On to the video. It's Wednesday. It's hump day. It's time for Q and A. Hey everybody! Hey! Hey, I'm Todd. I'm Jason. That's our little badass Pomeranian Ziggy. And we're... The Lamping Guys! Guys. Well, welcome to our third, I believe, right? Third, yep, our third our Q&A. Th third Q&A, that's right. We're going to answer all your questions. As always, we're going to order answer them in order. And we're going to answer them as quickly as possible, hopefully in less than a minute. So without further ado, let's get to those questions. I know, exactly. Hopefully in under a minute. Yeah. <laughs> You know that that doesn't happen a lot with us. It, it, we can be long-winded at times. Yes. It, it, it does happen, yes. So the first question is from Stephanie Rapp. I would like to know what Jason did or does prior uh, to glamping because you are a good speaker. Well, I appreciate that. Uh, Todd, uh, just to answer it in general, Todd is a pianist. I am a hairstylist. I used to be a graphic designer, and now I'm on a sabbatical focusing my time and energy into the YouTube channel for all of you guys to enjoy. So the next question is from Cynthia Caton. Great video. Jason, what do you do for work? What are your ages? Do you still like the park you live in? Well, we already answered what Jason does for work. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to respectfully not answer our ages because a lady never tells. That's right. So you guys can you feel never tell. Just feel free to guess if you want to. We may or may not respond accordingly. Yeah, that would be fun. Why don't you guess our ages and put them in the comments? Exactly. And uh, we'll let you know if you're getting hot or cold. Yes, aim low, aim low. Yeah, aim low, we're definitely. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's the last part of And it? then the last one, do we still like the RV park that we live in? Oh, absolutely. We love this place. We just celebrated um, one year of being here and having it be our, basically like our home base. And by the way, we just posted a video recently celebrating that and also talking about all the lessons that we've learned over the past year. So feel free to check that out after you finished watching this video. Yeah, and I just want to interject real quick. Uh, the really cool thing about this RV park is during snowbird season, which, which is officially starting to uh, finish up, uh, a lot of people are now leaving for uh, going back up north for uh, the hot summer months. And it's kind of nice because it kind of really, really empties out here. So it gets really, really quiet. But during the cooler snowbird months, they have a community center where they do weekly and monthly activities and Todd has actually played a few times here. So that's worked out really well and the people love it. And the last event Todd did was a like 1920s uh, flapper, kind of um, yeah. the Great Gatsby kind of uh, dress up as well. So you know us, we love themes. So it was actually a really fun themed event. Yeah, I love any excuse to wear like a tux and tails, which I did, and it was like a speakeasy type vibe. It was really great. I mean, the decorations, all the detail they put into these events is so much fun, and everyone does it on a volunteer basis, and the reception from the crowds has just been really, really wonderful. So I look forward to doing many more of those in the years to come, because we live in a great place with great people who know how to party, too. Oh, I know. Uh, we're, we're some of the younger people here. But I got to tell you, uh, a lot of these like retired folks, that they they drink us under the table. They uh -huh. can party it up for sure. Okay, so the next question is from Susan Bates, and she has a few different questions for us. She wants to know how we support ourselves financially. You know, we've talked about it before, so we're not going to really go into it. The next part of your question, Susan is do we plan on coming back to the Great Smoky Mountains? And that is a definite yes. We loved it so much. We loved Dollywood. We loved Mama Gertie's campground. We just posted a lessons learned video. And one lesson we learned was to take it much slower. So next time we go up to the Smoky Mountains, we're gonna stay much longer because we felt we were just scratching the surface of everything that that beautiful area has to offer. So definitely we are coming back. 
we hope maybe in about two more years we're going to do another trip up through there. Uh, the next part of your question is how long have we been full-timers? We just celebrated our one-year anniversary on April the 2nd, so we've been full-time for one year. And then the last part of your question, is this your first RV? And I'm going to let Todd answer the last part of this. It is not our first RV. We had a beautiful RV. His name was Wally that we talked about a little bit before. And he was great. He was about, what, 22, 24 feet long, little motor home. Perfect, perfect little part-time starter home. This is our second RV. This is the first one that we're living in full-time, however. So we decided to get the fifth wheel, and it's beautiful, and we, we couldn't be happier with this being sort of our starter home home, as it were. You know? Yeah, and to interject a little bit more about Wally the Winnebago, that was our dipping our toes into the lifestyle, kind of like Todd said, starter RV. It was 30 years old. We found them on Craigslist. But if you really want to see some of our adventures when we were first starting out, and you also want to see our whole journey from, you know, the first starting out with glamping, from downsizing, buying our truck, putting the house on the market, you can go to our playlist and you can watch our videos in chronological order from the very beginning all the way up to where we are now. And that will give you a really, really good uh, view of us and where we started our journey up to where we are now. So thank you very much for the question, Susan. We appreciate it. So the next question is from Lisa Whitney, and she would like to know uh, what we don't like about the RV life. Well, I'm going to start out first and say that I love everything about it, but if I could change one thing, I would like my bathroom to just be a little bit bigger because when I'm getting out of the shower and I am drying myself off like this, my left arm is always bumping into something. So I just wish I had a teeny little bit more arm room in the bathroom. But that's not a deal breaker by any means. No, not at all. And, and um, the area where I guess I wish I had a little bit more room was being able to store and use my keyboard because it is rather big and bulky. So it's kind of hard to squish into my closet. And when I bring it out into the room to, um, to set up, to make music, for instance, to write music for the channel, um, I find myself kind of like in the middle of the kitchen island. <laughs> you know, it's a little bit cumbersome, but overall it works out great. And, and it's good exercise to have to keep setting your keyboard up, strike it, lugging it around. So I can't complain about that, but in the future, if we were, and hopefully we are going to definitely upgrade to a larger RV, I would love to have a little bit more room for the keyboard. Other than that, I can't think of anything. We, we love this lifestyle. Yeah, no complaints at all. Mm -hmm. We really, really do like it. So the next question is from Beverly Steer, and she would like to know what our favorite springtime cocktail would be. Well, we actually just uh, created a new drink that we really enjoy. And we kind of were talking about that earlier today, what we should call it. And I think we're gonna call it Berries and Cream. And I think I'm gonna do either a two drink recipe or a three drink recipe cocktail video for easy summer drink recipes. So you guys definitely be looking out for that video coming up soon probably around the beginning of uh, the summer at some point. Just don't know when quite yet. I don't have an exact date. But the drink is really, really good. It's basically just a blackberry wine and 7-Up. And what gives it the creaminess, you guys who have been following us for a while, you know that we love whipped cream vodka. Not vanilla vodka, whipped cream vodka. Make sure it's whipped cream and that gives it kind of the berries and cream flavor. And it's really, really good. It's kind of like a, a stronger version of a creamy wine cooler, I guess. It's fabulous. Yeah, it's really good. So uh, that, I guess, would probably be our favorite springtime slash summer drink that we're drinking right now is the berries and cream. And we mean literally right now, like we just had a sip of it before starting this Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's fresh exactly. in our minds. Yes. Okay, so the next question is from Karen Fisher, and this is cooking related. What type of cooking do you find yourselves doing, uh, whether it's more grilling outside or cooking your meals more inside? Also, do you use an instant pot, and do you like it? 
Well, as far as cooking goes, I mean, we do a lot of cooking outside, not necessarily grilling. I mean, sometimes you just need to use the grill to get that perfect char on like a steak or something like that. But we've discovered recently that you can actually get a pretty good char on an electric skillet, which you can use outside or inside. Um, because weather is so random in Florida, it's nice to have equipment that you can use both outside and inside. We, we try to prioritize cooking out more as much as we can just because of all the heat and the moisture inside isn't awesome for the RV. So we like having options like the skillet, the um, air fryer, which is great. And yes, to answer the last part of your question, um, the Instant Pot, which we love. Uh, it has got to be one of the best inventions of the 21st century so far. I mean, it makes, don't get me wrong now, we've made some absolutely horrible, detestable failures in the Instant Pot as well. We oh, yeah. made rice that tasted like gum. But if you but if you make rice right, seriously, it's like the best rice in the world. You have to follow the directions in the Instant Pot cookbook to the second, literally, because if you don't do that quick release after 10 minutes, um, it will keep cooking that rice until it basically just falls apart. But we've gotten it pretty much down. And I would have to say my favorite thing that I have been using the Instapot for is either doing like roasts or pre-cooking ribs or making rice. But I use the Instant Pot all the time now for making rice. So great question, thank you very much. The next one is from Damar's Coaching, and they basically want to know if we're going to be visiting the Keys anytime soon, and also if we could share anything we've learned about traveling, costs, and stuff like that regarding different campsites we've been to, and um, if we're comfortable sharing a little bit about where we live as well. So as far as visiting the Keys, we've actually been to the Keys before. We definitely plan on taking the RV down to the Keys. But we also kind of look at the logistics because sometimes it's actually just cheaper either driving down to the Keys and not taking the whole RV with you. Uh, where we have been to the Keys before and the last time we went, we just drove the car to Fort Myers and then we took the Key West Express, which is a four hour boat ride that will drop you off at the Keys. And then basically for however long you end up staying, you can just get back on the boat at, at your leisure and take the trip back to Fort Myers and then get in your car. So if we go to the Keys, I have a feeling that if we do it, do it in the RV, that we're definitely going to probably make it into like a two week trip at least. So we can really, you know, enjoy the area, but that's definitely not going to be happening for at least three to five years because we already have so many other things planned that we want to do more in the immediate um, future right now. Now, as far as the other parts of your question, um, uh, you wanted to know about um, living and traveling and the costs, and you mentioned camping clubs and cost of like the different parks. Uh, we personally like to do state parks a lot. And if we do glamp it up, we like to do the really nicer high-end resorts. Um, so it varies. State parks, you're going to get the best deal. Usually you're going to get anywhere between 15 up to $30 a night. Most state parks only have electric and water. They don't have full hookups, but that's perfectly fine because you can just use their on-site facilities. And the great thing about that is you can take amazing long hot showers and just use their hot water and you don't have to worry about running out of yours and you also don't have to worry about eventually you're going to have to empty your tanks because a lot of state parks don't have sewer hookups. Uh, as far as the more higher end resorts, uh, that all depends on the resort. It also depends on the time of the year. Um, I'm sensing since you're mentioning the keys that maybe you have been there. So you do, I'm, I'm assuming, know that in the heat of the summer in Florida, that's when everything is actually cheaper in the Keys because it's just too damn hot and people don't want to go. Snowbird season in Florida is when things are much more expensive. So just like in certain RV resorts, they're going to be more expensive at certain times of the year. And then off season, they're going to be cheaper. But most places either offer daily rates, they offer cheaper weekly rates. In our case, where we live, we are... Um, month to month. They do not do yearly leases. So we average about $650 a month is our rent. But that can can range 
you know, in price as well. We know some people where they're paying about $325 a month, but you don't get as many of the amenities like you get here. We have a pool, we have an on-site bar, we have an on-site restaurant, we have a community room that provides all kinds of great free entertainment throughout the snowbird season. It just depends on where, the time and place, amenities, and I would think location as well. So I hope that that answered your questions. I was trying to be really fast, but give you as much detail as possible. But a really good question, thank you. So the next question is from Bobby Hall, and they, <laughs> this is a funny question. Um, are you finding any annoyances that you didn't expect? And if so, how are you contending with those annoyances? <laughs> Well, one of my biggest annoyances actually centers around the thing that we're sitting on that we love the most. These are the most comfortable recliners ever, the, but the, the, the uh, drink holders are a little bit small, so you have to make sure you put the right size drink in there. The most annoying thing, however, I have to say, is this table, because right now, um, the, the chair is pretty much upright, so it's relatively level, but once you start reclining, it starts reclining with the chair. So it's like, what's the point of having a tray table if it's not going to hold anything or if your food's just going to slide off into your lap. So that to me is a kind of a big design flaw. So that's pretty much my only annoyance though. Everything else is like delightful. <laughs> yeah, and um, I, I have one very small annoyance, uh, which kind of segues into my bigger one. But, you know, living here at home base at the RV resort, uh, my annoyance sometimes is it, it can get kind of like really loud. Uh, and that's usually more during snowbird season because the park is full. So everybody like comes down, you know, and, and brings like, you know, their like sports cars or motorcycles. Um, you know, there are several trucks that are very, very loud. So being in an RV, you've definitely got thinner walls. So uh, you can hear more what's going on outside around you. And when I am sometimes just really wanting to have a very beautiful, chill, quiet day, um, sometimes that can't happen. But then my next annoyance is having to still live local. I want to get out on the road more often. I want to be an on-the-road full-timer. We are full-time living in the RV, but we still have to stay local due to work and commitments but we hope to and maybe about another five years we're giving ourselves that goal to where we're going to be able to hopefully go a little bit more into semi-retirement and be able to at least go on further and longer trips but right now we are contained by choosing this life. It's kind of a double-edged sword. You know, we can be in this life right now, but we still also have to pay for it. So that means we're more local when we wish we could be more, you know, on the road full-timers. Yeah. I do kind of feel like the, the wheels on our house are kind of taunting us sometimes. Yes. They're like, hey, yeah. use us, use us. We move. Yeah. We're supposed to be moving. Why aren't I know. you moving? We're supposed to be out traveling more. But, I mean, we get out a lot and travel and stuff like that. Uh, I, I think so far the content we've been providing for you guys this has been, you know, uh, pretty good stuff, you know, based on, you know, our different travels. Like uh, we just posted uh, part one. Be prepared. Part two is coming. Uh, this video is going to be Wednesday. So either Friday or Saturday, I'm going to be posting part two of the Walking Dead uh, video. So for all of you Walking Dead fans out there, if you haven't watched it yet, last week I posted part one where we were in Sanoa, Georgia. That was uh, getting towards the end of our last road trip. And I'm sure you guys have figured it out by now that, you know, we are pretty much trying to post one video a week so we're not like throwing too much at you of our road trip travels that we did through the fall. So now we're coming up to our new series of road trip travels that we're going to be going on. And then we'll be slowly 
showing you guys those uh, throughout the rest of the year until we go on the next you know travel trip so we feel that that's kind of a, a good way to um, be able to get content to record to share with all of you and then um, you know we also will once in a while interject like you know local things that we're doing and other uh, videos that uh, on different topics that we will we feel that's important to share with you guys like our cocktail recipes <laughs> mm -hmm. coming right up berries and cream so this is a good question and this is the good example of where we went way over our minute oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> we did so we um, said we didn't have any annoyances and then we spent like 10 minutes talking yeah. about all of our annoyances yeah. well i guess we're caught <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so uh the next question is from and, and I'm not sure if I'm saying this right, but it looks like uh, Murray Chahi. This is actually a question off of Instagram. Uh, shameless plug, by the way. Uh, for any of you who are on Instagram and you haven't started following us yet, we do have an Instagram uh, page. And we have the link in our video description as well as we also have it pinned in the comments. So feel free to go and check out our Instagram and give us a follow. We would really, really appreciate it. So uh, the question is, do you miss having a home base? And we're assuming that you mean a sticks and bricks home. And yeah, yeah. I mean, and if that's what you mean, um, as far as missing it, we really don't. And we really feel that we have a really strong home base with our, you know, our sort of semi-permanent, I guess you'd call it, uh, camping space. I mean, technically it's permanent, but, you know, we, we take off and we travel from time to time. But, I mean, our, our home on wheels, our relationship family I mean that to us is our home base so if it moves around from time to time all the better so yeah we don't really miss having a, a home home or a building to live in because we like this a lot better all right thank you great question so the next one is from ready set go RV and this is also a question from Instagram are you still happy you decided to go full time? I think we can both answer that very easily. Mm -hmm. Hell, Hell to the yes. yes. Absolutely. Thank you for the great question. Yes, thanks. So next question is from Bill Schultz. Do you guys and Ziggy miss Wally the Winnebago? Mm -hmm. And he also uh, said that that was a really sharp RV. Uh, that's very sweet of you. We appreciate that. We felt that Wally the Winnebago was definitely sharp as heck and we do miss Wally but we did sell him to great new parents and the cool thing is that we still get to watch Wally on occasion through Instagram we actually follow the couple that bought Wally and so once in a while we'll get to see him out and about and still travel and uh, for a 30 year old Winnebago uh, Wally seems to be doing very well at the moment and uh, we look forward to you know, having wonderful memories with Wally and the great thing that we love about doing a YouTube channel is that it is also a video journal to us. So I like to joke when we are old and gray and we're in our 90s, we can come back to this YouTube channel and just go over all of the videos and just you know, watch all of the wonderful memories that we've created and read all of the wonderful comments that all of you wrote to us. So it's kind of for us a win-win situation where this lifestyle is just making beautiful memories for everyone involved. So great question, thank you very much. Yeah, and I, I really miss Wally sometimes. I don't even miss our house like at all, but sometimes I really do have a little bit of a hankering for Wally. He was so cute and we styled him out so nicely. I love the white cabinets and the gray walls, so anyway. I, I, I do have very fond memories of Wally and do miss him sometimes, but we kind of lucked out and got a much sweeter ride the second time around at the same time. Oh, definitely and much bigger because uh, I miss Wally, but Wally was tiny, Wally. very, very tiny, no slide outs, and we didn't even use the bathroom. We used the bathroom for storage, and we always made sure when we went camping in Wally that where we went to had bathrooms with showers mm -hmm. because uh we we did not ever use the bathroom in wally so yeah yeah okay so 
this question is from Arveen with the Maracas. And you know we love to give shout outs to people that have YouTube channels. And they have a YouTube channel. And uh, they're fairly new on the YouTube scene. I think they've had their channel for six months to a year. But uh, they found us recently and we subscribe. So, oh, I can't even talk. We subscribe. It's Hey, it's the... Um, uh, I think it was Beverly, wasn't it Beverly? It's the the black uh, berries and cream drink. It's it's kind of um <laughs> it's starting to stumble uh, across my tongue a little bit here. Uh, but anyway, the RVing with the Maracas, they have a YouTube channel. Definitely go give them some sub love and check out their videos when you get a chance. And their question is, what is your favorite music, or do you also uh, listen to podcasts when you're traveling? And I think that would be a great question for, for you to... Oh, yes. Well, I mean, um, I think we usually stick to things that are somewhat nostalgic in nature as far as music goes. Um, you know, sometimes I'll be like, hey, Jason, here's this new artist I'm listening to every now and then. But usually we, we love 80s music. We love 90s music, particularly like kind of dancing 90s music. And we love like, you know, 70s, like disco and also kind of like the more like kind of easy listening Song, singer songwriter stuff from that period so i think it also just depends on what mood we're in when we're driving like if we're like partying we're like let's put on some like you know electro but if we're like you know in like more of like a chill countryside sort of drive mode and eh, maybe we're just gonna put on something from the 70s something you know like super smooth and easy going and just chill out but yeah like some fleetwood mac mm -hmm. i mean we pretty much love any kind of music uh since i've been to the Smoky Mountains. I don't know if you remember this, but when we were hanging out up there, we were in a lot of different scenarios where we were hearing a lot of country music, and I've never personally been a fan of country music. Some artists throughout my life, you know, like, um, Ken, Ken, is it Kenny Rogers? Uh, obviously, Dol Dolly Parton, I really like her. Uh, Shiana Twain is usually like the more poppy crossover country artists. But when we were up in the Smoky Mountains, I got to experience and listen to a lot more country than what I'm used to. And I will admit that um, I have become recently even more, a little bit more open to uh, listening to country music. We definitely love 80s music. I love 70s music. We love e easy listening. Basically everything that Todd mentioned. Uh, I also used to love going out and going dancing a lot when I was a little bit younger. Uh, and I hit up the clubs a lot in the 90s, and I love house, and I love techno music. And um, if you want a good, uh, you know, pick me up when you're driving, if you're getting into that kind of, you know, a little bit of like road hypnosis, just put on some house or techno, and that'll get the blood pumping again and, and get, get you going down the highway until you get to that next exit. Yeah, and if you're driving down country roads and you've never experienced country before, try some country. He he did. He got to experience some uh, mm -hmm. some bluegrass and some like more kind of like folksy country, which I really like. I like pretty much every kind of music. I'm more of a rock and roll guy. He's more of a pop guy. But we meet in the middle of the '80s and '90s and all that good stuff. Yeah. So great. Thank you so much for the question. And this is going to wrap up this segment of our Q and A. And we are just so happy that you guys are keeping those questions coming. Um, and as always, please. Put some questions down in the comments section of this video uh, because as you guys are staying involved in this, it's also letting us, you know, create more Q&A videos to share with all of you guys and we're loving it. And uh, if you guys have any ideas for Q&A segments, uh, like I'm going to give you a little sneak peek. Like I thought one fun Q&A that we're going to do in the future. Right now, we still have so many questions to answer that that's not going to be for a while. So I'll, I'll kind of definitely let you guys know when we're ready. But we even thought it'd be fun to do like a Ziggy Q&A, you know, or, or do themed Q&As. But... So anyway, we're letting you know this little bit of sneak peek because uh, you can start thinking of some really cool questions. In the meantime, if you have just some you know regular questions for us, remember you can pretty much ask us anything. You know, just try to keep them family friendly. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention really quick is that uh, we are starting the first phase of our vacation for this year. So next week we are going to be going on a cruise to Cuba. So we're gonna be doing a lot of video filming for that to share with you guys. So we're really looking forward to uh, having that available and ready for you guys to watch. 
uh, probably in about another month or two from now. Uh, so in the meantime, we're going to be taking probably about a two week break, uh, maybe three. We'll just see how, how, you know, we're feeling when we get back from vacation. So this upcoming Walking Dead part two video that we're posting, that's going to be it for probably, like I just said, for about two to three weeks. Um, and then after that, we'll be getting back to our regular schedule. Anyway, that's all I had to say. You got anything else before we head out? Um, bye! Now that said, I, I have nothing else to say except thank you guys so much. We're looking forward to doing many, many more Q&As with you guys and all sorts of wonderful video content to come. So on that note, I think it's time to just say bye to everybody and until next time. Bye guys. Bye everybody. Ziggy, you want to say bye? I'm really, really sleepy I'm right tired. now. You guys have worn me out doing all this recording. <laughs>